This task is a continuation from the last as it requires a number of pre-installed apps such as NFS Common and RCB Bind on the Linux server and client. It also requires a Microsoft Windows client such as Windows 7, 8 or 10. Webmin is a web-based interface for the administration of Linux. Using most web browsers, you can set up user accounts, Apache, DNS, file sharing and much more from a remote system that can be just across the room or on the other side of the world. This is similar to the process used in an earlier task when the browser was used to configure a router. Before you proceed, configure the virtual network adapter to NAT within the Linux server virtual box setting. This will enable internet access which is required to download the webmin packages. If you are carrying on from the last task, then reconfigure the Linux Server Network Adapter for NAT. Then start Linux Server. Check that the configuration file Interfaces has been configured to use DHCP using the following command. Check and change to the following scripts. Any other references to the interface should be rimmed out. Save and exit. If you have altered the interface file, then reboot the Linux server using the sudo reboot. Now update the Linux server using the following. The application package to be installed has a file name of webmin 1.801.tar.gz, which is a compressed file. This will be downloaded to a directory named webmin which will be required creating in the root directory. First navigate to the root directory using cd forward slash. Then create the directory. Check that it has been successfully created. Now change to this directory. To download webmin within this directory, use the following command. Once again, notice that there are no capitals in this command. Check that it has been downloaded successfully to the directory using the list command. Webmin is a compressed file, so it will need uncompressing using the following command. We can see that the tar is followed by xzvf, and these have different effects on the tar command. X is to extract the data. Z means it will use an application called gunzip for the decompression process. V, Verbros, means the extraction will be viewed. And F will mean that the final extraction directory name will be webmin 1.801. Should you want to know more about the tar command, then you can use tar-help. List the contents of this directory. Next we should give the Linux server a static IP address using the following command. Apply the following script. Remember to rim out the interface EMP0S3 INET DHCP. Save and exit. Now shut down the Linux server. Change the network adapter to internal network within VirtualBox. Then restart Linux server. Check the IP address has been configured correctly using ifconfig when it has restarted. Most applications are downloaded in the manner will have some instructions on how to continue with the setup. Usually this will be in the form of a readme file. The readme file could be upper or lower case. In this instance it's in upper case. First you will need to navigate to webmin 1.801. So use the following command. This should have caused the command prompt to change as we can see here. To edit the readme file, use sudo nano readme. 
Remember, README is in capitals. If we look down to Note 1, we will find to complete the installation, a script named setup.sh must be executed. Exit Nano using Control X. Then in the command prompt, type in the following. You should find that the setup script will begin. Just press Enter to accept the default settings. When prompted for login name, press Enter to accept admin. In password, use let me in, all in lowercase. Then finally, yes, when prompted with start webmin at boat time. A message should have appeared that instructs you to use the following link, then log in with the name and password you entered previously, which was the default name admin and password let me in. This completes the setup of the Linux server. To set up a Windows client, in our example we have chosen to use Windows 10 and the Java runtime is required. Java is a programming language originally developed by Sun Microsystems and released in 1995 as a core component of Sun Microsystems Java platform. The language derives much of its syntax from C and C++ but has a simpler object model and fewer low-level facilities. Java applications are typically compiled to bytecode, class file. They can run on any Java virtual machine or JVM, regardless of the computer architecture, desktops, laptops, mobiles and tablets, etc. Therefore, any application or program that is compiled in Java will run on billions of devices throughout the world. First check that the network adapter within VirtualBox is set to NAT. Click on OK, then start the machine. Click on the network icon found on the taskbar, Ethernet, then change adapter settings. Right click on the network adapter, then on properties. Select IPv4, then properties. Check and change to obtain IP address automatically. Click on OK, then close. Close all windows, then click on start. Shut down or sign out, then restart. When Windows client has restarted, we will install Java. In the browser, type in the following link. Click on Agree and Proceed. Click on Free Java Download, then Agree and Start Free Download. When prompted, click on Run, then Yes when the User Account Control appears, then close the browser. Click on Install to continue. Towards the end of the installation, you may be prompted to install further applications or alter the browser behavior. None of this is required, so remove the options and click on Next. You will be prompted to close Java when the installation has been completed. In some cases, a new browser may open prompting you to enable Java, so click on Enable. Then on Verify Java version. Click on Run for Java Detection. Once verified, close all windows. Next, assign the Windows client with a static IP address of 10.10.1.2. Click on the Network icon found on the taskbar. Then on Network Settings, select Change Adapter Options. Right-click on the Network Adapter, then Properties. Select IPv4 then click on Properties. Select Use the following IP address and enter 10.10.1.2 with a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. Click on OK, close then click on Start, shut down or sign out.
then shut down. Change the virtual box network adapter to internal network. Then restart Windows Client. Check that the Linux server is still running. Back on the Windows Client, open the browser and type in the following. If connection fails, then continue with the following. Before retracing your steps, try and refresh the browser several times. If this fails, open the command prompt and try and ping the Linux server. If you can't, check the IP addresses. If the ping command was successful, then try your browser again. If once again this fails, it could be a firewall issue, so turn it off during this task. The initial connection can be slow. You should now have access to the Linux server. It is not the intention here to give an in-depth tutorial on how Webmin works. The purpose is to demonstrate how the server administration can be made easier using a lightweight browser interface, which if configured correctly would allow administration from the local or remote network. In this example we shall create on the Linux server a new directory from the Windows client. Still on the Windows client you will need to log in using the admin for the username and let me info the password. You should wait for a few seconds for Webmin to appear in the right hand side plane. Click on the menu items others found in the left hand plane. Then on File Manager. On the right hand side you should see the root directory of the Linux server. From the top menu click on Create Directory icon. This appears as a folder with a plus sign on it. In the new directory name type in Created on the client. Then click on Create. This should have appeared in the window. On the Linux server change to the root directory using cd forward slash. Then list directories and the new directory should have appeared. It also makes configuration much easier. For instance editing the interface file. Back on the Windows client double click on the etc directory. Then on the network directory. Here we should find the interface file. To the right of this file you will find a pen icon. Click on this. Here we can edit and save the interfaces file. Click on return to previous page. We can see how versatile Webmin can be if we repeat a share using NFS as we've done previously. We assume that the NFS has already been installed on both the Linux server and the client server. Here the Linux server will be configured using the Webmin interface via the Windows client. Create a directory called common on the Linux server. Click on the icon on the far left in the right hand side plane. This will take you to the top of the listing. Click on create directory icon. Type in common. Notice that there is no capitals. Then click on create. Now edit the export file with the details of the new client. Double click on the etc directory, then click on pages 3. Here you should find the exports file, and to the right of this the pen icon. Click on this. At the end of the script add the following. Save and close. The NFS service will now need restarting. We could return to the Linux server to do this, or we can use Webmin. If we look on the left hand side plane you will find within the menu an option called command shell. Any information that is typed in here 
will be displayed and executed on the Linux server terminal. Type in cd forward slash. At the top of the window we should be able to see the command, so we have changed to the root directory. Now type in ls and this should list all the directories and files in the root directory. If you scroll upwards you will find the two directories that had been created. Type in the execute command box the following. You may have to scroll downwards to display the execute command box. A message should have appeared restarting NFS kernel server. Type in sudo mount e. This should have displayed the two NFS directories that are available. Next we shall create the Linux client. Select the Linux client in the virtual box. Click on settings, then network. Check and change to internal network. Start the client. Next we need to set the client to a static IP address of 10.10.1.3. So right click on the desktop, then open terminal. Type in the following command to edit this file. Enter the following script. Restart the Linux server using sudo reboot. When the client has restarted, check the IP address using ifconfig. On the Linux client, create the common directory in the root directory. List the contents to check that it has been successfully created. Now we need to mount the directory using the following command. Check the newly created directory called common on the Linux client. By clicking on the file icon found on the left hand side within the GUI. Then on computer to navigate to the root directory. Here we should find the common directory that was created earlier. Double click on this and as expected it is empty. Now we shall create on the Linux server a file within the common shared folder via the Windows 10 using webmin. So on the Windows 10 client, click back on the file manager, then double click on the directory called common. Click on the icon called create file, and in the new file name, type in please read me. Click on create. Click on the pen icon to edit this file, and type in the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy sleeping dog. Click on save, and close. On the Linux client we should be in the common directory. Double click on the please me read me file and it should contain the text we entered on the Windows 10 client. Click on file then close then file and quit. Using webmin can also change the permissions of a directory in many direct ways. A quick example is we can deny a user or group to certain directories or files. Back on the Windows 10, place a tick within the box to the left of Please Read Me. From the top menu, click on the CH mode selected. This will allow you to change permissions. Here we have three headings, Owner, Group and Others. Each of these can be set as Read, Write and Execute. Remove the tick under Others heading and then click on Change. Back on the Linux client, if we attempt to read the file, we are denied.